Hi YouTube, we're back with the engine uh, rebuild, or I don't know if I'm going to be replacing or rebuilding it. First, I'm going to just pull out the engine and take a look at the inside, because it did freeze during a very cold weather we had. But anyways, so I'll be going through, seeing what, what would be better to do if I'm probably going to stick with an LS swap, or if I'm just going to rebuild this 2.8 liter V6. Let me know what you think still in the comments. But so far, the next step to get ready to pull this engine out is, in the last video I already disconnected everything here pretty much, but I had to remove this right here with this tensioner pulley. Now, there are these bolts I got last video. But for the tensional, tensioner pulley, a lot of you ask, uh, don't really know how to remove that. I saw some things on Reddit. A guy was confused with it. But anyways, I got a T50 bit. Where did it go? Yeah, right there. And I sprayed some WD-40 in it. That's why it looks a little wet. But I had to pretty much loosen it just like, like barely move the wrench, then tighten it, loosen it, tighten it over and over. Then finally, I just put about probably close to, oof, I was scared for a second, probably close to 100 and something pounds of pressure on it every bit. And it finally broke loose. So right now, it's that's in the process. It's like it's almost out now if you look at it. Get this on video. See, you guys see it. Anyways, so that's that. Now that tension pull is out, and with that being out, so that right there for now. This bolt here. I could pull out and the reason I needed to pull out that tensioner pulley was in order to remove wow that right there which there's what's that that's another bolt right there I think I have to remove not sure see I was able to pivot this before up and down Wow. Sure why I'm not. Anyways, I will find out how to remove this. And I'll get back to you. My next step is I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to remove the headers or if I'm just going to cut the exhaust or find a way to remove the exhaust. But that's my next step. All right. So I ended up taking out this bolt right here, which was the 13. So I had to take this one, that one, that. I had to take off the tensioner in order to access this bolt. That was right here. So... There's that. Now since all of this is off, I'm able to, off camera, I'll pick this up where you have this removed. And in a little bit, I will, um, I'll pull that out to get out of my way. Alright, so I pulled him out. He did have a piece connected, which is way down here. Let me see if we can see it. Right there. I unhooked him. You guys can't really see it. But now there's also a vacuum line, which I'm going to pull pull out of here. Right there, I'll pull this out. Then this will be out of my way. Now I have access to the engine mounts. This, the uh, air compressor, the AC compressor and stuff, I'm going to leave that in because I don't feel like unhooking none of this stuff and dealing with the Freon. But... Now all of that's out the way. I have easy access to engine bolts, head, whatever I need to do. Now, the next step, I'm debating on whether I'm going to do the exhaust, just cut it and pull it, or if, um, what I'm going to do here. Okay, so I want to give you an update. I can't remember if I, because it was yesterday, if I told you that I ended up removing this. It was a TT55 bit to remove the tensioner pulley. And um, what I ended up doing was, um, first thing I ended up doing was I got 10, uh, 10 millimeter sockets. And there's three bolts right here. One, two, and there's one back there. Three. Let's see if you see it. Yeah, right there. And this allows me to 
take off the whole carburetor now. So I unhooked all these uh, vacuum lines on it. This one here was here. This main line right here I went to that was there. Um, uh, what was there? I can't remember if uh, that one was here or what. Oh, no, I, no, no, this one was there. That's right. And I removed this one too. Next, I don't know whether to remove this wire, my harness, that goes to my electric fuel injectors. If I should pop this off and physically remove the wires. Let's see. Pull the wires out maybe, or exactly how I'm going to do it. I might just find out where it's at and pull off the carburetor and leave the wires in. The second thing I did was I removed both of my um, exhaust manifolds on it, which this one goes on this way. And I had this turned around, I think. I just put it back on so I wouldn't lose it. And I have three bolts here. The reason I have three is because let me see, they're right here. Let's see if we can't see them. They're all three the same size. And I am going to add them back on or put them in cardboard so I know where they're at. One went here and two of them went in the back. But these two middle ones are different sizes. And this one here is a different size. Um, this middle one, top middle one was a longer one. And the bottom was this one just the bolt but long bolt let's see okay so the next step i did was um what else did i do I, oh i did end up removing the holes off here which was this hose right here now i did the exact same with this side and the way this is, is these two bolts held up on here. And these are kind of long ones, the two middle ones are just bolts. Okay, let's put that back in. Let's see how. And the two end ones are short ones, but the two middle ones are long ones. Anyways, um, and uh, I took off all the fuel lines off it. Pretty much everything on the carburetor is disconnected. All of this stuff is disconnected. Now it's just ready for me to pull off the carburetor. And the next step I'm going to do is probably take off, I don't know if I'm going to take off this the manifold or if I'm going to start with the heads. But my goal is because my my cherry picker I don't have, and I will have to use uh this one engine lift I have, which I do not like using it. It's fit, it's kind of uh, crappy, but that might be why I have to use. So my next step is going to be to unhook these somehow, or find find this wiring harness all the way back and unhook and pull it. Whichever way I do is going to be the way I I go. I'm going to take off the carburetor and next the in this and possibly the heads. Then I'll pull the engine and put it on my stand. All right, so I took out these three bolts and now the carburetor is completely off. Unhooked all the vacuum lines. Now I did pop this off, which it was on there just like that, popped down all the way on. And I want to show you how these are lined up. The one facing the engine on the left hand side, the very first one you come to is right there. The second plug is right there. So that's the first, that's the second. Okay, now this third one, the one at the very end, is right here. Okay, now it's time to go on the left side. Oh, and the coil right here. Is just right right there now the first one on this side is right right 
there you can't really see if you can see it good but right there is this one right there so it's right there okay the second one is at the very end right there and the third wire is the very first one just like that now I got this off and the next step I'm honestly trying to do is to take off my whole intake. I have to remove this right here. And I'm kind of struggling with that. I don't quite know how to do it. So if any of you guys have some advice, let me know. And if I move this, it could give me access to that one bolt back there, which I could then take off the intake. But next, I just have to find a way to remove this. And anyways, it's getting cold out here it's about 40 degrees and on a nicer day i might open the hood again but oh and to take off the distributor i just use my my flathead and thank you for watching this is part two and pretty soon i will make part three